NPM. NPM is the node package manager that transformed how developers share and build JavaScript apps. It's the default package manager that comes bundled with Node.js, and it's been the backbone of the JavaScript ecosystem since 2010. If you're building web apps or APIs with JavaScript or TypeScript, you're probably using NPM. It has the largest package registry of any package manager with over 2 million packages. You can find a library for literally anything. The commands are dead simple. npm install to grab packages, npm run to execute scripts, and npm update to keep things fresh. It's straightforward, well-documented, and every JavaScript tutorial assumes you're using it. Now, here's the thing. npm's node modules folder can get hilariously large because of how it handles dependencies. And it's not the fastest option anymore, but it's mature, stable, and if you're just starting with JavaScript, NPM is where you should start. Yarn. Speaking of speed, Facebook created Yarn in 2016 to fix exactly that problem. Yarn's pitch was faster installs, better security, and more reliable dependency resolution. The commands are almost identical. Yarn add instead of npm install and yarn run to run the project. It's an easy switch. Yarn introduced lock files before npm, giving you consistent installs across machines. It's got offline caching, so packages you've installed before don't need to be downloaded again. If you clone a project with a yarn.lock file, use yarn, not npm. Mixing them causes weird issues. These days though, Yarn and NPM are pretty close in performance, so use whichever your project already uses. PNPM, the P stands for performant, and it's incredibly space efficient. While NPM and Yarn duplicate packages for every project, PNPM stores one copy of each package version on your machine and uses hard links to share them. Install React once, use it everywhere. This makes PNPM incredibly fast and space saving. Companies like Microsoft and TikTok use it, especially in monorepos. If disk space is tight, or you're managing tons of projects, PNPM is genuinely worth considering. Bun. Now here's something different. Bun is not just a package manager. It's an entire JavaScript runtime built to be fast. We're talking 10 to 20 times faster installs than NPM. The commands are the same. Bun install. Bun add. But Bun also replaces Node.js as a runtime, comes with a built-in test runner, and bundles your code without needing Webpack or Vite. Bun launched in 2022, so it's not as battle-tested as NPM or Yarn. But the speed is genuinely impressive, and if you're starting a new project, Bun is worth checking out. Pip. Pip is Python's standard package manager, and if you're writing Python, you're using this. It works with PYPI which has over 500,000 packages. Commands are super straightforward. pip install to add packages, pip install rrequirements.txt to install all dependencies from a file. That's the standard way Python projects share dependencies. One thing to know is that pip installs globally by default, which can cause conflicts. That's why you'll use pip inside a virtual environment with venv. It keeps projects isolated and will save you so many headaches. Conda. Now, if you're in data science, you've probably heard of Conda. It's a package and environment manager, and it's huge in scientific computing. Conda isn't just for Python. It can install R, C libraries, and binary dependencies. This is massive for data scientists who need NumPy, Pandas, TensorFlow, and other heavy libraries with complex dependencies. When you're doing machine learning or scientific computing, Conda is the go-to choice. It handles installing things like TensorFlow way better than pip does. For simple Python projects, stick with pip. For data science, Conda is worth it. Cargo. Cargo is Rust's built-in package manager. And honestly, it's one of the best out there. It handles everything, building, testing, documentation, and dependencies. If you're writing Rust, you're using Cargo, period. Cargo build compiles. Cargo test runs tests. Cargo run builds and executes. Everything is unified and just works. The Rust package registry, crates.io, has over 100,000 packages called crates. The community is strict about quality, so crates work well together. If you're learning Rust, you'll quickly appreciate how nice Cargo is. Go modules. Go took a different path. 
For years, Go didn't have an official package manager, but since Go 1.1, Go modules has been the standard built right into the toolchain. It's simple by design, like Go get to download dependencies, Go mod tidy to clean up unused one. What's cool is how it handles versioning using semantic import versioning, preventing dependency hell that other languages suffer from. Go modules is lightweight, fast, and honestly pretty boring in the best way. It works, doesn't get in your way, and lets you focus on writing code. Maven. Maven has been the standard build and dependency management tool since 2004, and it's everywhere in enterprise Java development. Maven uses XML configuration files, called pom.xml, where you declare dependencies. Commands like mvn install and mvn package are what you'll use daily. Maven brings structure by enforcing a standard project layout, which is valuable in large teams. But here is the trade-off though. XML configuration gets verbose fast, and Maven can be slow on big projects. But it's mature, well-documented, and the tooling ecosystem is massive. Gradle. If Maven's XML drove you crazy, Gradle is the more flexible alternative. It's for Java and JVM languages like Kotlin, but uses Groovy or Kotlin DSL instead of XML. Gradle is faster than Maven thanks to incremental builds. It only rebuilds what changed, saving tons of time. The configuration is way more readable, and it's the official build tool for Android development. Use Gradle if you're starting a new project and want flexibility and performance. If you're joining an existing Maven project, don't migrate unless you have a really good reason. Both work fine. Composer. For PHP developers, Composer is the package manager for PHP. It launched in 2012 and completely changed PHP dependency management. You'll use it for Laravel, Symfony, WordPress plugins, basically any modern PHP development. The commands are pretty simple as well. Composer install to set up dependencies. Composer require to add new ones. What makes Composer solid is auto-loading. It generates an auto-loader, so you don't have to manually include files. The PHP ecosystem has really matured around Composer. If you're learning PHP, Composer is non-negotiable. Homebrew. And finally, let's talk about Homebrew. This one's different because it's not for a specific programming language. It's a system package manager for Mac OS and Linux. And if you're a Mac developer, you're definitely using this. Homebrew installs command line tools, applications, languages, databases, basically anything you need for development. Need to install Python? Brew install Python. Want PostgreSQL? Brew install PostgreSQL. It handles everything. The command is just brew install for packages and brew install cast. For GUI applications, brew upgrade keeps everything updated. It's incredibly simple and it just works. What makes Homebrew essential is how it manages dependencies and keeps your system clean. It installs everything in its own directory and symlinks files where needed, so nothing conflicts with system files. Plus, it's fast and has a massive repository of formulas. Honestly, Homebrew is one of the first things developers install on a new Mac.